Welcome back to Today Rocket Science. I'm Adam Balkin. As we continue our look into automotive innovation, self-driving cars are on the horizon. And the horizon in this case is the Ford Motor Company's proving grounds in Michigan, where it's not uncommon to see a car zipping around with no driver. No, that's not a car careening towards disaster. It's one of the automated test cars that runs through this course over and over and over for hours on end, controlled remotely by employees who have strong backgrounds in technology and engineering. And uh, you know, that's why they call it uh, Built Ford Tough, because we put all these, all these over very, uh, have them drive over all these very severe roads. Uh, we have a pretty good idea of what our customers do to vehicles in the field. So uh, our tests here are intended to compress, let's say, you know, 10 or 15 years of service into a couple months. Jeff is part of a team that designed this method of testing. They built this robot that is controlled by a computer in a remote location to drive around a rigorous course for up to 24 hours a day. We can run these severe events uh, you know, on a continual basis and we don't have to trade out drivers to protect the, you know, them from injuries. The course is designed to be hard on the vehicles. It's the final stage of the design process before the cars go into mass production. They drive over bumps, curbs, and cracked roads to test for endurance and durability. Jeff says that a wide range of skills are necessary here at Ford's Proving Grounds, and a degree in any number of science, technology, engineering, and math fields would make you well prepared for a job here, but he says it's also important to think outside the box. Sometimes there aren't courses on this stuff because it's brand new, right? So you're sort of inventing it. And then you kind of have to uh, use the skill that you have based on what you learn. Uh, go at, you know, ask people that, uh, um, how do I uh, adapt this to this application? And then uh, you can get where you need to go. And they'll be the driving force for future innovations in engineering. So as we've shown you, it's not unusual for students to forego traditional sleepaway camps to instead spend their vacation pursuing a vocation. In North Carolina, future engineers are getting their gears in motion as part of a STEM summer camp. Meg Smith has more. 11-year-old Aiden Hunt is an aspiring engineer. Right now, I just like um, the engineering challenge, like trying to figure out how to make things better. So I like taking a design and then modifying it and learning about it and putting my own twist on it. He's learning how to build a model of a solar-powered wind farm at GTCC's E3 Robotics Camp. Adrian Wright founded it last year to get kids excited about engineering. We have a huge skills gap here in North Carolina and across the nation, and I think the most important thing is to get the interest in the youth early. When we make it applicable, they realize, oh, yeah, that is what I do in school. Like these students who are learning how to build their own computer. All the kids are into gaming, so they want those big, heavy-duty gaming computers, so they're learning how to build those. And students say having this hands-on and exciting learning is already getting them thinking about what they might want to major in when they go to college. Either be a weaponry engineer or just a normal engineer. I'm also considering architectural engineering. We're learning about those engineering problems in the real world that we have to substitute with other solutions to those problems. Excited for their chance to solve the state's skills gap. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Meg Smith. Not to be outdone, Texas, and in particular Austin, is offering its own program preparing future engineers for jobs in the tech sector. From robots to game design, the students are spending their summer immersed in all things digital. Victoria Moranin plugs us in. This is not ESA's first rodeo when it comes to building robots. It's amazing to like just see what you've created become something. You're just gonna roll around and then when it sees something, it's gonna catapult. But it's a first for Dylan, whose love for Legos is what geared him to the ID Tech Camp, where kids ages 7 to 17 tinker with robotics using Legos. Wait, because I connected this to here, right? It's perfect um, because each generation needs to get better. None of these robots are remote controlled. They are programmed through a computer and have sensors that detect obstacles. But it's not all child's play. These skills are also meant to prepare kids for jobs in science, technology, engineering, and math, using these building blocks to create a base for the future. Robotics is, are building cars. They're performing surgeries. So these kids are learning tools right now that are going to change the world. These kids are not scared of dreaming big. 
while Issa is working on engineering. Either like robot manufacturing, like making robots for car companies to man manufacture the cars and everything. Dylan's working to be the special. I'm thinking of becoming either a, like a master builder. I think I might get like a mine starter job jobs because this is fun. Because once you get the hang of it, honestly, a lot more easier than it looks. Everything is awesome. For it ain't rocket science. I'm Victoria Moranin. Now, we've all seen and participated in our fair share of elementary school science fairs over the years, but at Columbia University School of Engineering, some engineers set up their own show and tell, and their work shows that it's becoming more and more of a fine line between science fact and science fiction. Every mechanical engineer's dream is to become Iron Man, or build an Iron Man. So we wanted to build some kind of exoskeleton. So that's exactly what these Tony Stark admirers did. But their device, unlike the Iron Man in the movies, is meant to assist people in rehabilitating an injury. So right now, the current mechanism that we're aware of is the physician actually sits with the patient and moves it, um, moves the patient's hand themselves. But he says with their device, a doctor can program in the desired repetitive motion, and the patient can do the physical therapy from home. And the applications for the device don't stop there. They say it can be used as a robotic arm or even strength amplification. Another student engineer built a machine designed to help people, well, have fun. It's called the Shot Doc. It's a motion controlled basketball passing machine. Even though they're all from the engineering school, she says there were multiple areas of science that went into building the Shot Doc. A lot of coding, a lot of coding. Um, from the Kinect, we've got it feeding information to an Arduino, which then tells the motor controllers how to react. This was the first year that Columbia University opened the Engineering School Senior Design Expo to the public. Shalini says she thinks doing so could help inspire the next generation. I think that makes a huge difference, just seeing creations and seeing students who you can relate to in some in some way. I think that's very inspiring to children. Well, that does it for this episode of It Ain't Rocket Science. Remember. To find more science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your neighborhood, head over to www.connectamillionminds.com. And until next time, it's been a blast.